So I'm going to start with the unboxing of the face mask kit that we're giving to medical professionals. Um, first, I want to thank you for your service. Um, what we're giving you is, is not really a proper substitute for personal protection equipment, um, but we understand that some of you are in a situation where you might need to reuse equipment. So uh, we've done our best to kind of make what we have. I want to explain how to use this, but I also want to explain some of the limitations of our build process so you can make a proper decision on if this is something that you want to put on your face. Um, so the first thing that you're going to see is a headpiece here. This headpiece uh, was uh, designed by Joseph Prusa um, and is very widely printed right now. Um, there's currently a number of tests that are being done on it. It's a very stable platform and so we're going to build what we have based on that. The second part that you'll need and the one thing you have to contribute on your own is a set of rubber bands. So what you do is you take this face mask or this headband really and you loop the uh, rubber band around these pegs like so uh, so that you can then wear it on your head. Uh, there is sort of a right side up and upside down but it, it's really not that important um, and so this, this is the headpiece and this is what you'll reuse. Um, this thing will come packed in one of three ways. Um, it will come packed in isopropyl alcohol, it will come packed in spray bleach, uh, or it will come normally but it will have sat on a shelf for a long period of time and that's because we want these things to be as biologically stable as possible before giving it to you. We're concerned about being a vector of transmission. So uh, the second part that you have is a uh, manila envelope. And this envelope will contain some shields. Uh, and again, we will have done what we could to try to sterilize these shields. We're not concerned so much about cleanliness as we are about making sure that uh, the virus is not present. Um, and so uh, the, the shields that we use are laminating sheets that we have put in a dishwasher, which should be above 70 degrees Celsius. Um, and then they were put in this container. There may be a little bit of moisture in here. Uh, we've chosen to not air dry these in people's homes. Um, we'd rather put them in the package right away. So you're going to see these two sheets, which, um, well, resemble a nine by 11 and a half sheet of uh, film because it is. And you'll see four dots or four holes on the top. So the way you put this on is you start with uh, putting this tab onto one of the sheets here. Oh, excuse me, the sh take the hole and put it through one of these tabs. You'll pop all uh, of these. And the very last one, you need to bend a little bit to pop. And you'll see at that point, you have a solid connection. Then you put that, the band on. And then you can put it on your head. So this is the base shield, um, and this is what is currently being printed and used. Um, we've, we've made one addition, which as you'll note at the top, there's a little bit of, there's not as much coverage here as we'd like. So uh, let me explain how to add the secondary piece. The secondary piece is another piece of thinner plastic material. It's also got a set of four, uh, excuse me, oh yes, four holes on one side of it. And for those four holes, they will line up with these four holes on your headpiece. So you start with this corner here, you put this down, line up the second hole, line up the third hole. And again, you may need to stretch the band and to, if it's too tight, flex your band like this. Uh, Joseph Prusa did a fantastic job designing this. And so you can loosen it this way and just the act of putting on your head gives more pressure to hold it. So you'll see it looks like you've got a, a face visor with like feathers on the top. Um, inside your container you will have uh, two zip ties. So what you'll do is you'll take these uh, you know little leaps and you'll put them together and you'll run a zip tie through it. So you can see here, I'm running the zip tie through all of the pieces right here. And uh, you then connect it together like this. So at this point, we have uh, what looks like a shield and there's this sort of raised uh, dome-like element that does a much better job of protecting the top of your head. So then you can just put the mask on like so and we're done. Um, the original design has a bottom piece. We've elected to not put that bottom piece on 
uh, because it adds print time and because of the film we're using, it seems to be adequate. Um, if that's not good enough, please let us know. Um, it just saves us a couple hours of print time. Um, and so there you have it. If you are done with a patient or you no longer want to use this, you can simply reverse the process to pop these out. Now, this film that we're using is dishwasher safe, um, at least the brand that we're using right now. And so what you can do is pop this back in a dishwasher and in general, your dishwasher is gonna get above 70 degrees Celsius. Um, we don't know of a great way to uh, take care of this because this, um, this will essentially melt in the dishwasher. So, um, but it is stable and can be immersed in bleach if you wanna do that. Again, thank you for your service. So now I want to talk about how the shield is made from the perspective of those of you who may want to get involved with this process. There are three main components to this face shield. The first is the 3D printed headpiece. The second is the hand or machine cut um, shield. The third is basically the sterilization and logistic steps required to make something like this. Uh, so let's talk about the headpiece first. The headpiece is 3D printed. The major components that we need are 3D printing filament, which may be hard to get these days. Uh, we use PLA, there are other materials, and the second is obviously the 3D printer. Um, this is by far the longest, uh, most time consuming part of the process. Um, we're using an excellent design from Joseph Prusa. Um, I'll post a link to it. Um, it is basically what everyone is printing around the world right now for mask designs. Um, it's very, very structurally robust. It's very forgiving. Um, I've had prints that would have failed or at least they're not aesthetically perfect, um, but the design is just robust enough that it can tolerate that. It's also just got a lot of really great things. The act of tight, tightening this on your forehead holds the shield in tighter. It's just really well made. The next part is the face shield itself. Um, the main things that we need here are laminating pouches, um, as well as a way to cut these pouches, and that's with a human work or with a machine. So the pouches that you'll need are a five, uh, five mil thickness sheet and a three mil thickness sheet. We're using sort of standard laminating pouches, which are nine inches by 11 and a half inches. The bottom piece uses the thicker five mils. Um, and we basically, the only thing we do is we punch holes in them. And the holes need to be punched uh, per the specification at 79, 60, and 79 millimeter spacing which is basically just a hole punch that you've uh, calibrated properly. Uh, the second piece, the crown, is something that um, we built based off STL designs that we found elsewhere, and I'll post a link to those. Um, and that's basically uh, a three millimeter piece, excuse me, a three mil sheet. Uh, by the way, you laminate all of these first so they kind of get clear and strong. Um, and then what we're currently doing now is just making scissor cuts. There are ways to do this with a, with a Cricut or cry cut machine. Um, and these have the same hole punches on the top. Uh, finally, the assembly and sterilization. So uh, compared to other projects, this is actually logistically or component-wise not complicated, but there's a lot of things to be very careful of if you're giving masks to medical providers. Uh, we don't want to be a path of transmission of the disease to them. And so there are a number of steps that we do to try to stay safe when we work with each other, as well as when we give these masks away. Um, first is time seems to be a good way to let the virus uh, become inert. And so when you're exchanging shipments and things, sometimes we just wait. Um, when we uh, work on this, we have a final step that involves sterilization. So when you're working on these things, you don't have to worry about uh, touching them or using them or you know, involving your kids in the process, because I think they should be involved if they can. Um, but as a final step, we put these in a Ziploc bag. We spray um, either spray bleach or isopropyl alcohol. There is a link that I'll post down. Um, there are tests currently being done on what the best way to sterilize these things is. So until we know what best practice is, we'll use one of those techniques. Uh, these can be put in a dishwasher. Uh, dishwashers can get be above 70 degrees Celsius for a reasonable amount of time. And that's great. Um, there is some sort of warping, but in general, these things stay clear and do a pretty good job of surviving. Um, when these things come out of the dishwasher, we try as quickly as possible to put these things in pouches because we don't really want to expose them to air in our houses. 
Um, and uh, so there's a number of steps that we take. If this is something that's interesting to you, if you have other questions, there's an email address below. You can email me, um, and there are many others out there working on this. Um, and hopefully we can share knowledge and uh, make this a, a better place for everyone.